In this tutorial, we'll be going over how you can create this simple line style logo design using Affinity Designer. So I'm gonna open up a new document to get started here. And the first thing we're gonna create is the emblem or the shape that the design is going to be encased in. So to do that, let's grab the rectangle tool and I'm gonna to create a vertical rectangle like that. Maybe not that vertical, let me make that a little wider. And what I wanna do is remove the fill color from here. So I'm gonna come over here to the color tab. I'm gonna remove the fill color and I wanna make sure I have a stroke added to this. So I'm gonna increase this over here and I'm gonna make the size of this stroke about 10, 10 pixels or 10 points, whatever unit that is. And if you notice the corners of this stroke are rounded over here. So I'm gonna click this button over here that says miter join to give those sharp corners like that. So now I'm gonna make the top of this rectangle rounded here. To do that, I'm gonna come over here to the corner tool, click and drag over both of those corners and then just grab one of these nodes over here and bring that all the way in like that. And now we have a nice rounded top there like that. So what we'll create next is the outside or the border around the emblem here. To do that, Let's first go to the selection tool and let's come over here to the layers menu, right click that and go to duplicate. And I wanna select the one on the bottom and then I will go over to where it says contour tool over here, letter O on your keyboard. And I'm gonna take this node right here and pull this to the right like that, maybe about that much. Now again, if you notice down here, we have some rounded corners. We don't want that for this design. We want sharp corners. So I'm gonna select this button up here where it says contour type. I'm gonna select miter joints and now we have sharp corners as you can see there. Okay, so the next step would be to create some waves or some water within the emblem here. So let's do that now. I'm gonna come over here. Actually, I'm gonna grab my selection tool. I wanna to take this and move this out of the way for now. I'm gonna move this off to the side so I have some space to work with here. And I'm going to create a circle. I'm gonna hold shift while clicking and dragging so we have a nice round circle. And I wanna turn on snapping for what I'm gonna do here. So turn on this uh, magnet icon up top here. And I wanna make a duplicate of this. I'm gonna hold Alt and click and drag. And I wanna put this copy halfway through the second copy like that. And then I wanna click and drag both of these and do the same thing. I'm gonna hold Alt, click and drag both of them like that and then stack these up right next to each other like that. Now what we're looking at down here is where these lines intersect. These lines right here are going to represent the waves. We just have to get rid of the rest of this stuff up top here. So to do that, let's grab the rectangle tool Let's click and drag a rectangle going through about halfway through the bottom half of these circles right here. And now I'm gonna grab the selection tool, click and drag over everything to select it, and then come over here to the shape builder tool, which you can access right there or by pressing the letter S on your keyboard. And the setting we wanna choose up here is the subtract setting. So click on that little minus icon up there. And now I'm going to go and click on each of these lines over here to start deleting them from the image like that. I'm gonna delete these lines one by one. If you're noticing here, the result is like this wave that sort of looks like a wave. So let me delete these as well. I'm gonna get rid of these lines. Then I'll get rid of these lines over here and then I'll get rid of this line up top and then we're left with something like this right here. So let's grab the selection tool now. Let's merge all of this together by going to layer, geometry, and go to merge curves. And now that is a single curve. And over here in the stroke menu, make sure you have this option disabled that says scale with object. It should be disabled by default, but it's really important. So make sure, just to double check, make sure that's disabled. Once that's done, bring your waves. I'm actually gonna bring my emblem back into the picture here. I'm gonna take my waves. Now I'm gonna have to resize these so that it fits inside of the design a little better. I'm gonna scale this up, hold shift while I'm doing so. And I want this to be about that big like that. And I'm just gonna move this in until it's centered up. If you have snapping still enabled, it should center. And now I wanna clip off the ends here that stick out from this emblem. So I'm gonna hold shift and click on the emblem so I have the wave and the emblem selected or the inside part of the emblem anyway. Go back to the shape builder tool and then just click on those little tails over there to get rid of them. And there we go, now that's gone. Now I'm gonna create two duplicate copies of this. So I'm gonna right click this, actually no, I'm gonna select this object right here and I'm gonna hold Alt or Option if you're on Mac and click and drag down like that and then hold Shift so we get another copy. And I'm gonna repeat that one more time so we get the same thing over here. Now we have two copies of these waves. I'm gonna move this up a little bit, move that up a little bit. 
just space these out. And now I wanna make sure that these are evenly spaced out. So I'm gonna click and drag over all of them, come up here to your alignment menu and click on this button over here that says space vertically. And now they should be nice and evenly spaced like that. So now we have the waves created. The next part of the design is going to be the mountain range over here. So let's come back over here. Let's grab the rectangle tool and then click and drag on the canvas while holding shift to create a nice symmetrical square like that. And now I wanna rotate this around. So what I wanna do is grab my selection tool, rotate this around, hover my cursor outside of the icon right here so we get the rotation icon and then hold shift while rotating so we have a nice vertical, we have this, the corners going vertically like that. And what we could do now is let's grab, um, let's grab the nodes tool Let's uh, go to layer and go down to where it says convert. Uh, we're looking for convert to curves right there. We want this object to be curves. Now we can click on this node right here. Come up here to where it says break curve. And then come over here, select this node, and then do the same thing. Come over here to where it says break curve. And just like that, now we, these should be separate pieces. You could take this piece right here and then flip this vertically. And now we have this second piece right here. I'm gonna move this up, I'm gonna hold shift. I'm gonna turn off snapping for now because that's just gonna get in the way. Let me come back over here to the nodes tool and I'm gonna take this one and move this down a little bit like that. I'm holding shift while clicking and dragging this node down. Grab the selection tool, move this back up. And then we end up with something like this right here. We have these snow capped mountains with the snow on top. That's what this little shape right here represents. So once that's done, select both of those. Go back to the shape builder and get rid of those little lines that stick out there on the edge. And there we go, looking pretty good. And now I'm gonna create a duplicate of this. Let me move this over. I'm gonna create a duplicate by holding Alt and clicking and dragging. And I'll make this one bigger. Hold Shift while scaling. And I will move this over like that. And I'm gonna make this piece a little smaller down here because this is getting in the way of the overlapping mountain over here. And I'll maybe even make this one a little smaller as well. It appears that I made those a little too big. And once that's done, let me move these a little closer to each other. Maybe even make this one a little smaller. You'll have to eyeball this as you're doing it, sizing it up as you see fit. And now I want to get rid of this part that sticks out and protrudes. So let me actually move this over a tiny bit. Let's select all of this, go back to the Shape Builder tool and get rid of that little piece right there. And now I can grab my Selection tool Take all of this, move it over here, and scale it as needed. I'm gonna to have to scale mine down a little bit. Again, holding shift while scaling to lock the aspect ratio. Put that right there. Right about there is good. And if you notice, this part of the mountain is sticking down a little too far. So what I'm gonna do is, well first let me get rid of these little ends that stick out here. I'm gonna hold shift and click on the emblem. Go back to the shape builder. Get rid of those little ends right there. And now I'm gonna to go to the nodes tool. Let's select this line right here. I wanna put a new node right here. So I'm gonna click on the path right there to add a new node. I wanna click on that node to select it and then select break curve right there. You could break the curve. And now, oops, went to the wrong tab. Now you can grab your selection tool and take that line and get rid of it like that. And if you notice here, these mountaintops have pointed are pointed up top. If you want yours to be rounded personally, I think it looks better rounded. Just select it and come over here to where it says uh, join and set the join to round join like that. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna give these all rounded joins so they have a nice consistent look with the rest of the design. There we go. And I may even take this and move this down a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to create some trees to place here. So to create the trees, First of all, try to uh, remember what size you use for your strokes. All of these strokes should be the same size over here. I've been using 10 points, as you can see here, or 10 pixels, whatever that is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a new rectangle over here, or square, at the same size. Hold Shift. Let's rotate this around just like the last rectangle we created, holding Shift while you rotate to lock it into 15 degree increments. And we have nice vertical corners like that. And let's convert this to curves. Let's go to layer and convert to curves. And with the nodes tool, again, I'm gonna click on this node, break the path, click on this node, break the path. 
And now you could take this node down here and flip this vertically so that we end up with something like this right here. And now we have two parts. We just, we just have to draw the trunk of the tree now. We already have these two parts done. So let's grab the pen tool, which is located over here. Or you could access it with the letter P on your keyboard. And uh, I may turn on snapping for this one. I want to snap to the center of this rectangle right there and then hold shift and bring this down like that and then press enter. There we go. So let me grab the nodes tool. I'm going to bring this line down a little bit. We want this to go down a little further. And I'm going to select, let me go back to my selection tool. Let's select all of this and scale this down and get it positioned where the mountains and the water is. So I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to turn off snapping now because that's just going to get in the way. You move that down. I'm going to hold Alt and click and drag to make a duplicate copy. Move this one over here like that. And then I will make one more copy as well and put this one over here. Let me zoom out to see how that looks. Okay, looking pretty good. Um, I may make this one a little smaller and move that up. There we go. I like how that one looks better. So I'm going to get rid of these ones over here and replace them with that resized tree. So let me take these, click and drag like that. Put this one down here. Or you know what, leave it right where it is. Click and drag like that while holding Alt. Put that one right there. And I may even make another copy of this one over here. So I'm going to hold Alt, click and drag. And again, if you're using Mac, then you're going to use the Option key instead of Alt. And then I'll take these ones and move them down. OK, so let's take care of these little trunks that stick out beyond the water here. To do that, instead of using the shape builder, I'm just going to use the nodes tool and move these to move these nodes up. I'm going to hold shift while doing that so it locks it vertically onto the vertical axis like that. And I'll do the same thing over here. Raise that up. OK, so the next part of the design would be to create the sun and the sun rays at the top here. So to do that, let's grab, let's grab the selection tool, click off of it to deselect. You know what? I'm going to just adjust this. This is bothering me. I'm going to move this. I'm going to adjust this a little more. Uh, sometimes the best way to design these things is to just do it on the fly while you're designing it. So you don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing here. Just move these things around to your own taste. There we go. I like how that looks a lot better. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Let's grab the circle tool now. I want to snap. First of all, let's turn on snapping. I want to snap to the top center of the emblem here and then click and drag and then hold Control and Shift to scale out from the center and snap it to the edge like that. Now I'm going to grab the Selection tool and bring this down while holding Shift. And the circle should be the same width as the, uh, as the emblem there. And to do that, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to hold Control and Shift and scale this down so that it's about that size like that. Don't worry about it being too far away from the mountains here. We're going to address that in just a minute. For now, we just want to make sure we have this nice round circle here to be this, to, to act as the sun. And now we're going to create these rays of sunlight going around the sun. So to do that, let's grab our pen tool, snap to the middle up here, click once, hold shift, bring this down over here, click again, press enter, or actually press the escape key, and now you have one of the sun rays. So let's duplicate this. I'm going to hold alt. Click and drag while holding shift, bring this one down here. Hold shift, click on the other line. We should have both lines selected now and group them together by going to layer and selecting group. And then now what you could do is hold shift, click on the circle and make sure that that's aligned uh, like that on the vertical axis. And now you could take these grouped lines right here. We're going to duplicate them. Come over here to the Layers menu, right-click on the group, and go to Duplicate. And now rotate them around like this while holding Shift, two steps like that, and then press Command-J or Control-J to keep duplicating copies like that. And now we can, what we can do now is select all of this, ungroup everything by going to Layer, Ungroup All, and now we can go and delete these objects one by one like that. Okay, so what I will do now is I'm actually going to make this all a little smaller. Make that sun a little smaller. Let's turn off snapping now. I want to make sure that 
these that this is brought down so that it's more compact and there's not so much open space in here. I wanna take the sun and the top of the emblem and bring it down. If you notice here, everything here is nice and neat. There's not much open space in the way here. So I wanna do the same thing over here in this design. I wanna click and drag over everything, grab the nodes tool, click and drag over these nodes up here and then just bring them down. Oops, I missed, I missed the click there. There we go, just let me try that again. Or you know what, that's not gonna work. Let me try from the bottom over here. Let's bring these up. Hold shift while doing that to lock it onto the vertical axis. Bring that up a little further like that. And now I will take my selection tool and make the sun a little bit smaller here. And in fact, I may even take these waves and these trees and bring them down like that. And to bring them down, I'm just using the arrow key. There we go. Maybe I'll do the same thing with the mountains. I'll select them. Again, just eyeballing this as I go along. I don't have exact measurements for this design here. And that part of the design is finished now. So what we're gonna do now is the last step, we're gonna add some text. Before we do that, let's add some color to this. If you notice everything here is uh, black lines. If you wanna change the color of those lines to something else, just click and drag over all of it. Come over here to the color tab and make sure you have your stroke fill selected and not the fill color. We want stroke selected. And with stroke selected, you should be able to change the color of the lines there like that. And I'm gonna change the color of my lines to something like this. And the final step would be to add some text in there like that. So uh, I'm gonna grab my text tool, artistic text tool, click on the canvas. And for this demonstration, I'll just be using the word logo design. Let me zoom in on that. Let me press Control A to select everything and change the font to, you can change the font to whatever you like, but any kind of sans serif font that kind of matches the style of the emblem would be preferable. Um, I don't know if you have Avenir Next installed on your system, but if you do, that's a good font that I recommend for this one. Make that bold. Grab the selection tool. Let's make this the same color as the lines here. So select the fill color. Grab the uh, dropper tool, which is right there and click on that blue area to make that text the same color. And now we could take the text and scale that up like that. Place this over here. Now I'm gonna click on the outside edge of this emblem right here and go to the nodes tool, click and drag over these two nodes and then just bring these nodes down like that. While holding shift, of course, to lock it onto the uh, vertical axis. And I'm gonna take the text, oops. I'm gonna take the text if you make a mistake, just press Control Z to undo what you just did, like I just did there. Make this bigger so it matches the width of the emblem up here. And now I can take this part and bring that back up with the nodes tool, like that. And if you zoom out, there you go, we are finished. We have created our simple line style mountain range logo design using Affinity Designer. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.